Hi everyone, welcome to another Teaching Kitchen at Home. My name is Christiana, I'm a registered dietitian and wellness manager with Eurest at United Health Group. Today's cooking class is all about seasonal cooking with tomatoes. Tomatoes are in season here in September and we're gonna actually do three recipes today featuring different cultural takes on the tomato. I'm gonna break this class up into three parts so you'll be able to watch the videos um, in a different order if you like. All right, let's get cooking. The first step in today's recipe is to slice up your cauliflower. So when you're looking for cauliflower at the grocery store, you wanna look for cauliflowers that um, look nice and dense and firm and are nice and white all around. You wanna avoid cauliflower that have brown spots on them. If you get home and you happen to notice that there are some brown spots, you can easily just shave those off with your chef's knife, no big deal. All right, so when you slice a cauliflower, you want to avoid wasting as little as possible. So I just trim the little end off right here, and then you're actually going to use your chef's knife to kind of core the cucumber, uh, the cucumber, the cauliflower, to reveal the florets. And then the florets just easily pull off right when you start coring it. Now the core is completely edible. I actually find the core of the cauliflower to be very sweet along with the leaves. So I include that when I roast my cauliflower. Cauliflower is a very nutritious vegetable. It's rich in fiber. It's very low calorie if that's something that's important to you. Um, and it also has an antioxidant called anthocyanin. Um, and antioxidants like this really help pr protect your body against chronic disease. A lot of people like to use cauliflower as a substitute for rice or pasta. I'm honestly not as big into that. Um, I like regular rice and regular pasta, but I eat a lot of cauliflower and I love it roasted, which is exactly what we're gonna do today. So I've got my cauliflower all chopped up. You want pieces that are about the size of a florette. Think bite-sized pieces. And what we're gonna season our cauliflower with today is some turmeric and some olive oil. So again, we're really going for um, that Indian feel. So we're gonna add some olive oil. Now olive oil is not traditional to Indian cooking, of course, but I love olive oil. I love the nutritional benefits. And frankly, it's what I have on hand, so that's what I use. And then some turmeric. Turmeric is actually a root um, that's been used in Indian cooking for thousands of years. It has some really interesting anti-inflammatory um, benefits. So we're just gonna toss all of this together. Let's get it nice and coated. And then we're gonna season with a pinch of salt and a little bit of pepper before this goes into our oven. Our oven is set to 425 degrees. And um, it's probably gonna take about 20 minutes for this cauliflower to roast. So I have always loved Indian food. When I lived in New York City, I lived uh, for several years in a neighborhood called Jackson Heights which has a really large Indian and South Asian population. And I have to tell you, I've had some of the best food I've ever had in my life um, in that neighborhood. So now I live in Minneapolis and I'm exploring the different um, options for Indian food around here. Uh, but one thing I really love to do is bring Indian flavors into my own kitchen. Indian food is very nutritious. It's largely plant-based and contains a lot of spices that have um, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. If you're interested in learning about Indian cooking, I recommend checking out um, some of the Indian American chefs that have been for much longer than I've been alive, um, have introduced Indian cooking into American cuisine. Um, and this is one of my favorite books. 
I've been trying uh, Madra Joffrey's recipes over the last few years um, and find them really easy to follow um, and very straightforward. So we're going to make our chutney now. Um, chutney is basically a condiment or a sauce that's commonly used in Indian cuisine. There are infinite varieties of chutneys. They usually involve some kind of vegetable or fruit and lots of spices. Today we're making an Indian spiced tomato chutney. We've had a slight technical difficulty with my induction burner, but I'm over here at my stove now and I'm going to show you how to make this Indian spiced chutney. The first step is you're going to heat up a little oil in the pan. And this oil is going to be used to saute our spices. So first we're going to put in whole cumin seeds. And then we're going to add mustard seeds. This is going to really add that nice sort of um, almost mustardy bite to this. And then some heat, some red chili flakes. All right, I'm going to give that a stir so you can see that in there. So the reason we do this is um, spices are fat soluble, which means that when you saute them, for lack of a better word, in fat, it helps bring out their flavor and aroma. All right, so next we're gonna add our turmeric. Right in there, oh, got a little spill. Real life cooking, guys. All right, so turmeric has those great anti-inflammatory properties. It also adds a nice yellow color. And then we're going to add uh, some minced ginger. You'll notice I didn't peel the ginger. You don't need to go through that extra work. The ginger peel is fully edible. Um, and this is gonna be a nice chunky sauce anyway, so you don't need to worry about it being perfect. Well, oh, I can smell my ginger. Now we're going to add our tomatoes. This is one can of whole tomatoes. I'm going to turn the heat down a touch because it's going to splatter. Yep. And I spilled, but again, real life. All right, give that a stir. Okay, now we're going to add some apple cider vinegar. And guys, don't believe anything anyone tells you about apple cider vinegar being a miracle food it is not there's no science to support that it's a really great vinegar it has really good flavor it's really good in sauces marinades salad dressings but it is not a miracle food all right lastly we're going to add some sugar just to cut the acid um, of the ingredients in this chutney all right, hopefully you can get a peek into the pan there. I'm gonna turn this up, let it come to a boil, and then reduce to a simmer. Um, and the cooking time is kind of dependent on how you like it. It definitely needs to get thicker than it is now. Um, I'm gonna give it 15 minutes and then we'll check on it. Have you ever heard the joke that ketchup is a vegetable? Well, as a dietitian, I can tell you that ketchup is definitely not a vegetable. However, tomato products like ketchup, but mostly things like crushed and canned tomatoes and tomato paste are a really good source of lycopene. Lycopene is the antioxidant in tomatoes that helps protect us against certain cancers. It's also what gives tomatoes its red color. Lycopene is more easily absor absorbed by our body in canned tomato form rather than raw tomatoes. If you love tomatoes, I recommend eat a variety of tomato products. Eat raw tomatoes, cooked tomatoes, as well as canned tomatoes. Our cauliflower is beautifully roasted. It's time to plate it up with this chutney. All right. This would make a really nice, um, unusual Thanksgiving side. I think that your vegetarian and non-vegetarian guests would really love it. All right, so we got this plated up. And then our chutney, you see how nice and thick that is? It looks a little bit like salsa. 
um, but it really reduced a lot from when we first put all the ingredients in the pan. All right, so we're just gonna top this cauliflower here. Now, it's time for me to try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I like to eat. <laughs> well, thank you guys for again spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos about global cooking with tomatoes. I hope to see you again soon. Please follow me on Instagram at Christiana underscore Urest RD for this and a lot more.